Here are the video solutions for NCFE Level 2 Functional Skills Maths and this is Section A, the non-calculator test and this is practice paper number one. So let's take a look at uh, question number one. So we know that one person needs a minimum area of 9.75 so for 27 employees we need 27 lots of that so our calculation is 9.75 times by 27. Now whenever I'm tutoring students I always tell them with a multiplication of decimals first of all forget that they're decimals so let's just do 975 multiplied by 27. 7 5s are 35, 5 carry the 3, 7 7s are 49 plus the 3 is 52 carry the 5, 9 7s are 63 plus 5 is 68. Now moving on to the 2 it's the 2 of 20 so put in a 0 First, two fives are 10, zero carry one, two sevens are 14, plus one is 15, two nines are 18, plus the one is 19. And just add the top row and the bottom row, so we get a five, a two, a 13, carry the one, that's gonna be 16, so two, six, three, two, five. So 975 multiplied by 27 is 260, sorry, 26,325. So nine. So what is 9.75 times by 27? Um, well, all we need to do is count the number of digits we see that come after a decimal point. So there are two digits after a decimal point. So in the question in total, there are two decimal places. So therefore, we will need two decimal places in our answer. So the answer is 263.25. Um, if you're not sure where to put the decimal point, well, you could say, well, what is nine times 27? or 10 times 27 is 270, so it's got to be less than 270, um, and 263.25 would seem much more sensible than 2632.5 or 26.325, for example. Okay, moving on to B. So we've been told that the area of Office A is 411.92, so we don't need to do anything there. Uh, the problem is working out um, the area of um, B. Now what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to turn this into two rectangles. I'm going to work out the combined area of these two rectangles and then take away the area of this triangle here. So let's call this rectangle A and rectangle B. So I'll start with rectangle B. Again I'm forgetting this, little, I'm, I'm including the triangle there so um, I'll deal with the triangle later. So rectangle B, that is simply 10 multiplied by 24.75 and that is 247.5. Rectangle A, well first of all we need to work out the dimensions of A. If the whole thing is 25 meters and this is 10 from here to here, then from here to here is 25 take away 10, so that is 15 meters. And similarly, um, okay, we've got a bit of a problem here. We know it's 24.75 all across from this point to this point, and we know it's nine and 4.75, so this um, is 13.75 across. So what I need to do is take away 13.75 from 24.75. Well, the 0.75 and the 0.75s will get rid of each other. So it's just 24 take away 13, so that is 11. So this is a 15 times by 11. And 15 multiplied by 11 is, so let's split up the 15, one blank five, one plus five is six. A nice little shortcut for um, the uh, 11 times table there. Now A and B combined is gonna be two for 7.5 plus 165.0. Let's add these together, so 0.5. Seven plus five is 12, two carry one. 10 plus one is 11, carry one, two, three, four. So all I need to do is subtract this little triangle here. So the triangle is the base, 4.75, times by the height, which is 10, divided by two. Um, so that is a 47.5 divided by two. So let's do a little bus stop. How many twos go into 47.5? Um, four divided by two is two. Let's put a decimal point above first of all. Seven divided by two is three with a remainder of one. 15 divided by two is seven with a remainder of one. So put in a zero so I can stick the one on top of it. And 10 divided by two is five. Okay, so we want to subtract this area of 23.75 from our total. So 412.50 take away 23.75. Okay, zero minus five, the first of all put a dot 
uh, decimal point in line. Uh, 0 minus 5 can't be done, so 5 will become a 4. The 0 becomes 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 4 minus 7 can't be done, so 2 becomes 1. 4 becomes 14. 14 minus 7 is 7. 1 minus 3 can't be done. It's getting a little bit irritating, isn't it? So 1 becomes a 0. This 1 becomes an 11. 11 minus 3 is 8. And 40 minus 2 is 38. So the grand total there is... Um, oh, it's not asking us for the area. So we know that this area is um, 388.75. So we want to know which one is closest to 400 metres. Well, this one A is going to be, um, that is 11.92. And if I just count up from 388, uh, or if I round it up to 389, that is 11. And if it's a 0.75, that means it's a difference of 0.25. So we've got an 11.25 versus an 11.92. So therefore, it is um, office B. Um, probably those those final workings out might need to be put down here, so they're a bit more obvious. Uh, but it's the answer is B. Tricky question. That one a lot to do. Okay, this one's uh, a bit um, easier. So first of all, we know that one third for A and two fifths. Um, for B, so what is one third plus two fifths? So I'm going to do my um, cross multiplication technique, or some people call it the butterfly technique, or the crisscross smiley face. I've heard it referred to. So that's going to be one times five, which is five, plus three times two, which is six, all over three times five, which is fifteen. So that is eleven over fifteen. So that is eleven fifteenths for A and don't care so the rest well what's the rest imagine if you've eaten 11 fifteenths of a pizza then you've got four fifteenths left over so that is four fifteenths okay so on to 1d um, so we've got a graph here showing the annual cost and how it varies with the total area of office space and what's the question um, are actually asking us to do Okay, we need to estimate the cost of renting a 400 meter square office next year. And we're told in the line above that it will increase by 5.75% next year. Okay, so what we need to do is find out what the uh, cost is of um, renting a 400 meter square office space this year and increase that by 5.75. So we need to increase a certain amount by 5.75%. So I'm increasing this year's by this amount here. So what is the price of 400 meter squares this year? Now, we need to bear in mind as well, um, I'm gonna slightly cheat on this question, um, only because we don't have a calculator here. So the number that we get, and if we're increasing it by 5.75%, it's gotta be a fairly nice number. Anyway, what I need to do is, I want to work out an estimate for 400 meters squared. So I need to draw in a line of best fit. So let me just draw in a line. So remember that the line of best fit cuts through um, the middle of all these data points, trying to keep more or less the same number above and below. So for example, that's a terrible line of best fit because all the dots are above it. This is also equally bad because all are below it. So something like this might work. Now, um, I've experimented with this particular line, but the only problem is if I use this line here, 400 square meters gives me a really nasty value of about um, 67,500, a bit of a guess. I mean, we, we could use that value. It will be acceptable in the mark scheme, but that is a really horrible amount to calculate 5.75% of. So I am going to delete this and I'm gonna try and fiddle this line so that I get a nice value. Now, if I do a line so that, um, is a little bit steeper like so. What I've done here is on my 400, uh, 400 square meters corresponds exactly to 70,000. So you can use 67,500 or um, there is a range acceptable, but given that we're not using a calculator, we need to be calculating a percentage of um, a fairly nice figure why? Well, because the percentage amount is a very horrible percentage amount. Um, if it was just 10%, it wouldn't be a problem. We could we could use any number for 10%, but 5.75% is a pretty horrible 
uh, percentage number. Right, let me get my pencil back. So we're increasing, uh, what do we say, was it 700 or 70,000? 70, 70,000 pounds by 5.7%. So first of all, what is 5.75% of 70,000 pounds? Okay, so what we need to remember is that 5.75% uh, of 100 is 5.75. I should put in the percentage sign there. So 5.75%, sorry, a lot of people aren't aware of the fact that 5.75% of 100 is 5.75. 63% of 100 is 63. 72% of 100 is 72. So let's now, uh, now that we know that 5.75% of 100 is 5.75, let's do 5.75% of 1,000. That's going to be 57.5. So therefore 5.75% of 10,000 is going to be 575. So if 5.75% of 10,000 is 575, we need to multiply it by 7 for 75. Uh, for seventy thousand pounds. So, what is five seven five multiplied by seven? Seven fives are thirty five. Carry three. Seven sevens are forty nine. Plus three is fifty two. Carry five. Five sevens are thirty five. Plus five is forty. So, what we know is that five point seven five percent of seventy thousand pounds is four thousand and twenty five pounds so if we're increasing by five point seven five percent we are increasing by four thousand and twenty five so the calculation is simply seventy thousand plus four thousand and twenty five and that comes to uh, seventy four thousand and twenty five pounds there we go uh, challenging one that one okay so question one e um, it says here what fraction of the quotes is for delivery and installation well, the quote comes to 18500 and the delivery is 1875. So as a fraction, it's simply 1875 out of 18500. So there it is, that's the answer as a fraction. However, unfortunately, it's not in its simplest form. So what we need to do is just look at these numbers and think um, how we can divide them down. What can we divide both of these numbers by? And for me, the most obvious number is five. So uh, we're gonna, um, well, we can't use a calculator, unfortunately, otherwise this would be a lot quicker. How many fives go into 18? That is three with a remainder of three. 37 divided by five is seven with a remainder of two. 25 divided by five is five. So on top, we've now got three, seven, five. And on the bottom, <coughs> excuse me, we've got one, eight, five, zero, zero divided by five. Fives into 18 go three times with a remainder of three. 35 divided by five is seven, zero, zero. So 3700. Zero, zero. Let's divide by 5 again. So 375 divided by 5. 5 into 37 go 7 times the remainder of 2. 25 divided by 5 is 5. And let's do 3700 zero, zero, divided by 5. 5 into 37 go 7 times with a remainder of 2. 20 divided by 5 is 4. 0 divided by 5 is 0. So that's 25 over 200. Uh, sorry, over can't read my writing, so it's 740. Okay, so um, we can still divide these numbers by five. Uh, 75 divided by five is one remainder two. 25 divided by five is five. So that is gonna become 15 over um, 740 divided by five. Seven divided by five is one remainder two. 24 divided by five is four remainder four. 40 divided by five is eight. So it becomes 15 over 148. And can that be simplified any further? Um, it cannot, so that is the final answer. 15 over 148. Okay, question F. We've had some really challenging questions in this paper, but this one's not too bad. So first of all, the percentage discount or percentage decrease, that is the difference divided by the original multiplied by 100. So whenever you're calculating uh, a percentage decrease or a percentage increase, this is your formula. And a percentage discount is just a percentage decrease. So what is uh, 10,000 minus 8,500? Well, hopefully you can do that without having to do um, an annoying column method. Just count up from 8,500. So it's 500 to 9,000 9, and another 1,000 to 10,000. That's 1,500. 
So what is 1,500 as a percentage of what it was before, before it was discounted, which was 10,000 um, times by 100. Well, to be honest, um, if I can just, if I was using a calculator, I would do top divided by bottom times by 100. But here I'm just gonna see if, can I convert this into a, um, a fraction that I recognize out of 100? Remember, percent means out of 100. Um, divide top and bottom by 10, so I've got 150 over 1,000. Divide top and bottom by 10 again. I've got 15 over 100, and 15 over 100 is therefore 15%. So F was um, one of the slightly easier questions, some real horrible ones in that uh, particular test, and that is the end of section A.